Hey guys, welcome back to 90 Feet From Home. I'm your host Ashley and I am here. <laughs> I am functional. Uh, I am still around. It has been a little bit since I've posted anything and uh, in that absence the world seems to have completely fallen apart in case you guys were living under a rock of some kind. Um, yeah, it's just been kind of hard to get into the motivation to film and to, to do much of anything since there is no baseball and life has no meaning. No, 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 I'm kidding. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's just been hard to adjust. I'm working from home now from my primary job. Uh, it's a little tougher to get out here where my setup for filming is, uh, is actually my mom's place out in the country because I have a whole studio here. So yeah, that makes it a little tricky to make the two hour drive out of town. Thankfully, we're not on like a hyper lockdown where we're not allowed to go place to place and she and I are the only ones seeing each other. So we're very safe. Uh, I adopted a new cat. That's a whole new thing. He was a stray. Took him in. His name's Nemesis. I will throw a picture up here. He's very cute. Um, yeah, so that's what I've been up to. And of course I've been seeing all your comments and I'm sorry I haven't been replying promptly. It's just there's not really an easy way to do it from my phone. So anyway, I am alive. The channel is alive. New subscribers, it is thrilling to see you. Uh, I am hoping to get up some regular content. It may not be twice a week as usual, but it'll be periodic. And I have a couple old episodes that you might see where I'll put a little disclaimer ahead of them. And hopefully we'll be able to post some new stuff for you through, through all the muck and mire that is this particular scenario. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. This is the first time I've put makeup on in six weeks. It's been weird. It's been a weird time. Not like, you know, not like full glam here or anything, but you're welcome that I'm not packing suitcases under here like I normally am. Oh, anyway, um, this is going to be a real quick welcome back episode. I just wanted to let you guys know that I have stuff filmed for you that you'll be seeing soon. I did a new ball destruction video. I have an old video on the Astro scandal. I'm going to do a couple new videos about, you know, life without baseball and a quick primer on some of the Asian leagues that are playing right now. So you guys can get a sense of those. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the Boston Red Sox scandal. And if you're watching this two years from now, none of this will matter to you and you will wonder what I'm even referring to. Anyway, with that in mind, this video is kind of just how can you get a baseball fix when there is no baseball? And somebody in one of my comments threads asked if perhaps I could do a video talking about books that I would suggest. And this seems like the absolute perfect time to do that. So I thought I would mention a couple of books. I'm going to start off with one that I haven't yet received, but I'm very, very excited to get. And that is the new Keith Law book. It is called The Inside Game. I have pre-ordered it because I did order through an independent bookstore and books are being kind of deep prior prioritized as non-essential items for shipment right now. Who would have thought? I think they're fairly essential, but I get it. You know, I get it. I could have just ordered an ebook, but I like physical books. So hopefully I'll be doing a review on that coming up. But I thought I would go through some of my old favorites, some new releases that were really good. But if you liked Keith Law's Smart Baseball, uh, this promises to be very similar and I'm very excited to read it. So without further ado, I will get into the ones I actually have copies of sitting next to me. So that's something to enjoy. First, I would like to start with a absolute classic. So classic, I paid a dollar for it. Is that where it is? Look at that. It's not gonna focus. Yeah, there we go. I paid a whopping one dollar for this at a used book fair. You can find used copies online at Thrift Books, which I love. They're still shipping right now somewhat delayed depending on where you are. And yeah, buy books independently if you can. Support your small independent businesses right now. They need your help. Uh, this is of course The Summer Game by Roger Angel. Roger Angel is... is... Yes, I am checking to make sure Roger Angel is still alive. I haven't been on Twitter in a couple of days. You guys are just lucky I'm not drinking a White Claw right now. Holy Hannah, you guys. Roger Angel is indeed still alive and 99 years old. He hasn't written anything recently, but he was doing regular work for the New Yorker all the way up until I think 2018. He didn't do much in 2019, if anything at all. But yeah, Roger Angel is, I would argue, one of the best baseball writers of all time. One of the best, most poetic, most beautiful voices in baseball that you could ever experience. Experience. And if you have never read a Roger Angel book, this is a very good place to start. He was a traveling sports reporter who kind of moved into baseball discussion and essays. And he is an absolutely beautiful prose writer. And I cannot recommend more highly that you pick up a Roger Angel book during this time that we are without baseball to remind you of just how vital and beautiful and 
and incredible baseball is as a sport. And if you're just getting into baseball and you're kind of just a surface fan, I really do suggest reading Roger Angel's work because I think it'll make you feel more deeply what it is that crazy people like me who live and breathe baseball really get out of it. Um, so this would be a number one suggestion if you need something to read right now. Roger Angel, The Summer Game. There are quite a few other Roger Angel books that are very good, all worth picking up, but if you want a place to start, this would be my suggestion. If you are a new baseball fan and you, like me, are very nerdy and love the history of things, George Vexy's Baseball is a book I read and I think devoured on one flight. Um, and it's just a beautiful, quick, concise overview of baseball as a game. It's incredibly easy to get into. It's very, I mean, it packs, it packs a pretty good punch for a relatively skinny book. So if you don't feel like investing 20 hours of your life watching Ken Burns baseball, which I mean you maybe should, but you do want to get into how baseball started, how it kind of progressed, the overview version in a very concise way, I would highly, highly recommend this book. Again, it's George Vexy's Me and Names. There's one coming up in this episode that I actually had to email the writer just to make sure, and I'm still gonna mess it up. Anyway, this is a wonderful history of baseball that is not too, too dense, too overdone. Anyway, quick, concise, very easy to get into history of baseball. Excellent choice. I don't know why I did this to myself, guys. I picked books where there's just no possible way I'm going to get any of these names right. Berries for Lugas, The Grind, was actually recently mentioned by Sean Doolittle in a list of books that he's been reading and enjoying about baseball. It is all about the like intense and endless 162 game season and it, similarly to some of the other ones I've mentioned right now, is a nice quick read. I know I'm a nutcase. I read about 100, and 100 to 150 books a year, depending on, you know, what I do. I read a lot of audiobooks. I do read a lot of graphic novels, but I do read 150 books a year. But I know not everybody is crazy and not everybody reads a ton of books. So sometimes it's a bit more accessible to get one that's a bit shorter. And it's kind of ironic that a shorter and more accessible book is about the length and intensity of the season. I really did like seeing that Sean Doolittle uh, picked it as one of his favorite sports books, because I think it says a lot when a baseball player can read a book like this and say that it speaks to their own experience. So I would very much recommend picking up this one if you want a quick kind of insightful look at just how intense that 162 game grind can be. Very good choice. This book cover is very shiny and I'm trying to get it so that it doesn't really show or hide itself. Ooh. Ooh. It's been a while since I've filmed and I don't know what anything means anymore. Is my light too far away? Am I just losing it? It's very possible. Hi, did you miss me? I don't know, guys. I don't know how much of this is going to make it into the video. Who knows? Anyway, Hall of Name by D.B. Firstman is not a book I would suggest trying to read cover to cover in one sitting. This is a book you'll want to leave out on a coffee table. If you're a bathroom reader, maybe throw it in the basket there. I really hate suggesting really good books as bathroom reads, but the way it's written is it's a very kind of encyclopedic collection of the weird and wonderful names of baseball. And because of the way it's written, it's definitely not something you sit down and read like in one sitting. You kind of want to pick it up and read a name or two, flip around to the different sections. And it's such a fun and engaging and incredible book because D.B. Firstman does a great job of picking apart the etymology of names, anagrams for names, histories of the players, and they really focus on a really in-detailed view of, of those players' lives. They don't make it jokey. Some of the names are funny, and some of the names are historically known as being ridiculous baseball names, and they do a really good job of not making the player themselves the butt of a joke. So you get a history of the player, kind of their best day on field, um, again, the funny jokey stuff like anagrams of their names, fun facts, and it's a really cool, unique little baseball book that I do actually recommend every new or old baseball fan pick up, because there's something there for everybody to learn and enjoy. And it's just kind of a cool thing to throw out on your coffee table or just have somewhere that you're going to pick up and read one or two names at a time. Uh, this one is very, very fun for that. Gonna knock over my whole stack of books. This one... This one's actually relatively new and it's called The Wax Pack by Brad Baluchian. And I apologize to Brad if I messed that up. I asked him for a breakdown of his name. He gave it to me. I'm still real bad at this. So my last name is McLennan and everybody pronounces it wrong and I get mad about it. 
but I'm I'm just as bad. I am just as bad. Anyway, on to this. This is a brand new book. This just came out this year. This is super fun, guys. Like, I cannot, I really can't recommend this more highly. It's a really unique baseball book because it's not just, you know, where are they now player histories. The entire conceit of this is that Brad gets himself an old unopened pack of 1984 Topps baseball cards and he eats the gum, bless his heart, and then decides he's going to go on a road trip to meet all of the players whose cards are in the pack. And of course, it's some lesser known players, some sort of bigger ones, as most baseball card packs are want to do. Um, and one dead player, which of course makes things a little bit of a trick, you know, you can't you know, meet a dead guy. But it's, it's a really unique, cool premise for a book. Brad's not a baseball writer per se. And the book is as much about him, I'd say, as it is about each of the players. Like you get a lot of insight into the players and who they are now that the baseball aspect of their lives is done, how closely they are still connected to baseball as a sport, how you just really never get it out of your system. And in that sense, it really connects to Brad's POV because it's a lot of him going back and kind of touching base with his own past and how you can't escape your own history and the connections there to that. Yeah, this is a very unique book. I've read a lot of books by baseball writers about baseball, but this is very much about a fan whose life was touched by baseball and kind of the experience that goes beyond that. And it's just, um, it's really good. I, if you want something that's a very engaging, sucks you in, not at all dry, funny, great narrative voice, um, this would be a really good suggestion. Uh, and I really do recommend picking this one up. It's a great book to have during this kind of drought because it, A, lets you dream about baseball road trips. Oh, I miss you. I had to cancel mine. And also just lets you kind of go over the past. I think almost every single major league team has a player that is represented here who at least was briefly on one of their teams. I think there's two or three teams that don't get mentioned at all, but for the most part it's actually very, very thorough. So any fan of any team um, can get some enjoyment out of this and I do recommend that very well. I'm gonna take my whole pile down with that one. Ooh, crash. And of course, it would not be a book recommendation list. And I honestly, I haven't read this one, so I can't tell you if it's good because I literally just got it two days ago. But I have been so excited about this one since they announced it because I, of course, am an avid reader of Fangraphs. I've been a featured writer at Fangraphs. Fangraphs is one of the best places on the internet to get your baseball information. They also really could use some help right now to keep afloat during these very questionable times. So if you have 20 bucks to spare and you feel like being generous, go over and get yourself a membership at fangraphs.com. It helps pay for their writers, their research, running the website, maybe grab some merch. You know, there's a bunch of different ways you can help support Fangraphs, but definitely $20 membership. I think I'm not going to say most of us can afford it because it's weird times. And if you're out of work right now, I wish you the best. And it's just a really tough and uncertain time. But if you have 20 bucks and you can afford it, um, please support the wonderful staff and people running Fangraphs because they could really use your help. So on that note, could I hit this book any more times? Woo, we're gonna have some fun spikes in the volume later when I edit this. Eric Longenhagen and Kylie McDaniel. Eric is of course still at Fangraphs. Kylie was previously at Fangraphs and is now at ESPN since the aforementioned Keith Law, who also did the foreword for this book, moved from ESPN to The Athletic. Um, let's talk about baseball writer musical chairs. Yeah, that's fun. Anyway, Eric and Kylie are two of the smartest minds in baseball, especially when it comes to prospects and up and coming baseball players. And they put together future value which is all about predicting baseball's next great star. And I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Two great baseball writers, great baseball minds, talking about a very important and I think interesting topic. Uh, this is not a thin book. So if you don't wanna dive too hard into it, um, maybe not the one for you, but if you like to think about the future of baseball, if prospects are of any interest to you, if the mindset of how baseball teams are created and how players are picked is at all of interest to you, this would be a really good one to grab. Um, so yeah, that one's next on my reading list. 
And with that, I think that gives you guys a pretty decent list to pick from. I know a lot of places libraries are closed right now, otherwise I would be suggesting libraries. But if you have an OverDrive account through your local library, you can actually take out ebooks and audiobooks, some of which these books are available in. Um, D.B. Firstman's I would really suggest picking up an actual paperback copy of, just because the way it's laid out I think lends itself better to a print copy than an ebook copy, and I don't think ebook is yet available for that one. Some of the others though are perfectly fine to pick up in a Kindle or, you know, Nook format and just enjoy the writing if ebooks are your jam. And yeah, lots of uh, good options there. Uh, if I didn't mention a favorite that you've recently read, please mention it down below in the comments. I know I mentioned a couple others in my Christmas gift guide. Keith Law's first book, Smart Baseball, is in there. Uh, Jay Jaffe's Cooperstown Case Book is another really good one to pick up. Baseball Life Advice from Stacey May Falls is another really good one. You can also subscribe to her newsletter, which is still going out once every week or so right now. And she kind of waxing philosophical about life without baseball. And Stacey's an incredible writer. So that's a really good one to pick up in your downtime if you would like. Yeah, that pretty much does it for me. I just wanted to let you guys know I'm fine. I'm here. I am trying to record for you and I promise to have some videos though who knows when. Um, you'll see some older stuff. I'm just gonna record some bumpers for that to kind of let people know it was recorded pre-COVID. And yeah, I'll be back. I did a video deconstructing a baseball that'll be up later this week. Uh, so you have that to look forward to. And yeah, anything new and exciting. If you have anything you want me to record videos on right now, leave a comment down below about that. Uh, I'd love to do by request videos for you guys right now. Well, I have no baseball to watch. That's it. I don't have much else for you. I hope you guys are safe and healthy and well, thinking of each and every one of you. And I hope to see you guys at a baseball game in the future very, very soon. So come back next time. Hit that subscribe button down below if you feel like it. Hit the thumbs up if you liked this. Or just if you want to make me feel nice. That's that's cool too. I don't know. And yeah, just leave a comment. Say hi. Tell me you guys are doing okay. And we will chat very, very soon. We'll see you again. Bye.